Pete's Garage. You know, I do a lot of work here, I build a lot of engines, work on a lot of cars, and one of the most difficult things that I think there are to do in a car is work on your paint. Now, the reason this BMW is here behind me is because the owner tried to clean the paint and do some work himself, and he didn't do such a great job, and he made some mistakes, and he brought it to me, so now i got to fix the paint. So what I want to do is show you uh, what happened, why it happened, and then I'm going to go through and show you how I paint something, how something should be painted. BMW has got to look flawless, so we got to follow the three simple rules of painting. The, si the simple rules of painting, there's three simple rules. Preparation, preparation, and preparation. Paint job is only going to look as good as what's underneath it. Just remember, if you paint a piece of glass, it's going to look like a painted piece of glass. If you paint a brick, it's going to look like a painted brick. So. We'll go, so let me show you what happened, what, what, what happened here, what we're going to fix, and then we'll paint it. Now this is what happened. The owner was cleaning his car and he was detailing it. And he noticed a little problem with the paint, so he tried to fix it himself. And here it is. He tried to fix it, then he tried to sand it a little bit. He sanded right through the clear coat. He tried to touch it up with some uh, touch-up paint. And when you try to touch up your paint, you're not going to touch it up and make it look better. Once it looks this bad, you're going to make it look worse and worse and worse and then you run the risk of the paint that you're putting on here eating through the bottom part of the paint but that's not the only thing we're going to fix I wish it were the only thing I had to fix because then I could paint right along this body line of the hood and I could just paint this little section and blend it in and it would look really nice but there's more to it than that so I got to fi fix the entire hood and it's going to be hard to see but there are a lot of little stone chips throughout the entire front of the car here so this car has been chipped up um, right around here a lot of chips, little chips that he filled in here. Over here there are a lot of paint chips. On top, what's interesting is, looks like there was some, maybe some uh, sap that sat here and ate through the paint there. We got another, another sap paint. It's really pretty thick there so that's not going to come off. A lot of little dings and nicks. A lot of stuff like that. And even on this side, coming down the front, okay, a lot of chips there. So I'm not, I can't just paint the whole thing, so we're going to have to paint the whole hood. Now there are a couple ways you can go about this. You could take the hood off and do the work, but if you do that, you run the risk of damaging it when you put it back on, or damaging the car and then getting it all lined up, which is a problem. So I'm going to leave the hood on. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to disassemble it. I'm going to take off all the, the grill work here, the squirters, disassemble it and once it's disassembled I'll put some plastic underneath it to protect the rest of the car and the engine bay and the hood everything from or the roof the windshield protect it all from all the wet sanding I'm going to do so that's what I'll start with down with some prep ball just remove any grease wax anything that might have been left behind uh, when the owner had it and I want to clean the surface before I put a surface around there so I can sand it down Alright, now let's take a look at where we are. 
first look at the spot that started this whole thing. Now this is where the owner tried to do some work. And you can see that there are two rust spots here and those rust spots were coming through the paint causing bubbles. And now I'll have to grind that out and fix that. And you can see we got the metal, looks like the factory epoxy primer surfacer. This car might have been a different color. It might have been painted once already, once complete. But aside from that, the the, the chips that are here, those little chips, they're all over the place. If you look in the front here, I'll try and go real slow to show you. Uh, here's, a, here's a big chip right here. There's chips right there. There's chips all over the front. If I get some more light on there, you'll be able to see. Chips, all chips all over the front. And the difficult thing about this is that you can see all the chips in the paint here all along the front. And it's expected. You're driving down the road, it's going to get chips in it. So this whole front end of this is all chipped up. Those will all have to be fixed. Coming over to the front of the hood, same thing here. And that's why you sand this down first. You sand it down first so you can try and find all the low spots and all the chips. Going through the front here, there are chips all through the front of this. Down here, lots of them on this side. Lots of little chips. Come up on top of the hood. There's an area here that was really high, and I'll have to investigate that to make sure that's not a rust spot coming through. Again, on the side here, lots of little chips. There's probably a good uh, 40 chip little chip marks that I have to investigate, make sure that they are not going to be rust spots. On the corner here, there's a chip mark. Here's a spot where the where that kind of I think was tree sap was sitting there, so it made an indentation. Here's a second one, and that is going to cause a a mark, got to fix that. Uh, and if you see this area here, see how it's a little shiny, a little more shiny than the rest of the area. Because when I sanded this, this area is a little bit lower. I rub my hand across there, I can feel it. It's low by maybe maybe thirty thousandths. It's, 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 but it's there. I can feel it. So I got to fix that. And then well, we got some chips. Uh, there's a chip right here. Um, and on the side, it's not too bad. So just a chip up front here. So all in all, there's probably a good 50 or 60 little chips I have to fix. I'll fix the big things first. I'll fix the big um, spot over there where he started. I'll fix the bigger chips and I'll fix that low spot up first. And then we'll paint a primer surfacer on here, which is a higher build primer. Then I can re-sand the whole thing down and make sure I got every little chip filled. surface prepared I'm going to tack rag the whole thing down just to make sure it's completely clean and I'm going to put on a guide coat uh, a guide coat of primer gray which is a primer filler this is a heavy build primer and what I mean by a guide coat is I'm going to spray this all on the hood here and then I'm going to be sanding almost all of it off and all that should be left is whatever's filling in any little pinhole that's left on this hood it'll be perfectly flat perfectly filled in and ready for paint. Remember, preparation, preparation, preparation. This is all the preparation that goes into doing a flawless paint job.
right, that's it for the preparation. I had that guide coat on there and I sanded most of it off. And I went to a 600 grit sandpaper with the block to make sure everything's nice and flat. Then I went over it by hand with 1000 grit. Wet sanded the whole thing 1000 grit and it is glass smooth. Remember, painted piece of glass, it looks like a painted piece of glass. You paint a brick, it looks like a painted piece of, piece of, piece of brick. And this is perfectly smooth. It's going to be real nice. This is in perfect condition. Remember the three rules. Preparation, preparation, preparation. And now I can wash this down and uh, take, take it over and get it ready for paint. I used to paint this hood. First, I wet sanded the entire hood, block sanded it with 600 grit wet and dry sandpaper. I wet sanded the whole thing to get it nice and flat. Cleaned it off, wiped it down, made sure it was clean. Then I sprayed on a primer surfacer. It's a little thicker than a sealer. What that is, is like a spray, uh, it's almost like a spray spot putty. It's a little thicker. You spray that on as a guide coat, and then you wet sand the entire hood again. At this time I did it with 600 to make sure it's nice and flat. There was a couple spots that were difficult, so I put, used 400, but I ended up using 600 on the, on the entire hood just to make sure the whole thing was flat. Then once it was done, you wipe the whole thing down, you prep it for paint, wipe the whole thing down with any kind of prep solvent prep wash, anything that's a cleaner and degreaser. You don't want to use solvents like lacquer thinner or anything like that. Get a prep solvent, wipe the whole thing down, make sure it's completely degreased and clean. Then, you want to get ready to paint. Now if you don't have a paint booth and you're going to do this in your garage, it's not that difficult to do. You just have to establish airflow somehow, which means you need a fan blowing out of a door. You put a fan by a door and have it blowing out the door. And what will happen is, as as it's blowing air out the door, it creates a venturi effect or a vacuum inside the room. And as long as you have a door or a window open on the opposite side of the room or somewhere else, air will flow through the garage and go out and you'll be able to spray. Then I sprayed, uh, after I sanded that, wiped it down, used a tack rag. And at that point, I had the floor was wet to make sure there was no dust going to come off the floor. I had a suit on to make sure nothing was going to come off of me. Wipe it down with a tack rag, take your time, make sure it's completely clean. You want to have the fan on so that you're drawing air through and if there's any dust in the air, it, it exhausts through the room. Put down, get your uh, tack rag, tack off the entire surface nice and slow. Uh, you don't want to go really fast to create static, you just want to go nice and slow, make sure it's nice and clean. Then I put on two full wet coats of DuPont Chroma Base. Uh, it's expensive. A half a quart of chroma base is going to be about a hundred bucks depending on the color. So 
I use a quality uh, base coat and two full wet coats of that. Let that completely dry and it was about an hour or so I let that dry. You can tell when it's dry when it's completely dull. When it's completely dull it's dry and you can go ahead. Then after I did that I tacked that off very lightly to make sure there wasn't any dust or overspray left. Clean that off good. And then I put on two full wet coats of Nason the Select Clear. Select Clear is made by DuPont. It's pretty close to the Chroma Clear, but it's not as expensive. So if you're just doing a spot panel repair or a hood or something like that, you don't need to spend $700 a gallon for clear. This uh, is like uh, a gallon of clear, select clear with the hardener is something around, I'm going to guess, 200 bucks, two and a quarter, something like that. Plus, and it's gallon, so it makes, it's mixed four to one, so you get five quarts out of a gallon, so it's not that bad. Spray the clear on there, let that set, let it rest. Now once you spray clear and you're doing touch up on a car, chances are that the gloss of the finished product is not going to match the rest of the car. Unless it's a Porsche or a high end car where it was wet sand and polished and it's completely flat, it's not going to match. So I had a gloss on the hood that didn't match the gloss of the rest of the car. It was actually too shiny. So I broke it down. Uh, I when first I had a, a rough sand with 3M Super Duty rubbing compound and then I went cleaned that all up and I used the um, the, the uh, perfect the 3000 swirl mark remover that cleans up the surface cleans up all the swirl marks knocks down the, the uh, shine just a little bit so it matches the rest of the car and it ended up matching perfectly and finally the last hand thing I do the last hand coat is a sealer I use the Shine Master it's just a, a, a wipe on uh, sealant. It seals that raw paint so that nothing's going to attack it. And it makes it nice and smooth. It cleans out the pores. If you notice, it, was a, it got a little dirty there. So if there's anything left behind in the pores of the paint, it will draw that out, clean it up, and you buff it with a nice soft cloth. And it makes a, makes a great shine. So if you're going to do this and you need to learn color sanding, I'm going to do that in a future video because I have some more paint jobs coming up. So we'll do color sanding. Fixing runs, sags, um, if a bug flies in, the, the clear or something like that. We'll do that in a future video because I'm going to be making some more videos of that. So uh, I hope this helps you have confidence to know that you can paint yourself, you can paint in your own garage, and you can produce great results. If you have any questions, leave them. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please click on subscribe so you can stick up with all the great stuff we do here at Pete's Garage. And I really appreciate you stopping by Pete's Garage.